Hey good people, it is Tisha from Politics and Fashion here today with my handy dandy notebook, okay? Because I want to talk to you all about my best purchases of 2021. I sat down, girl, I made a list, I checked it twice, I edited it. Like, I was really serious about this list, okay? And I have items in four categories, okay? Things will be time stamped down below that I feel like really made 2021, you know, a good year. These are material things. However, they are things that enhanced my life in some way or another, okay? So if that sounds good to you, make sure you are following me over on Instagram for daily style inspiration, social justice rants, and stories about my god babies. I mean, it's a little bit of poops over there, a little bit of ombre. You already know how we do it if you're part of the tribe, all right? And just keep watching. First up, let's start with clothes and shoes, y'all. All right, so in January of this year, I got a call from my essay down at Hermes in DC at City Center. Hey, Quincy, if you were watching, and Quincy said, girl, the bag has arrived. And now for many people, receiving that call might be a Birkin or a Kelly. We'll get there someday, okay? <laughs> but for this year, Quincy knew that I had been on the hunt for a minute for a Picatinny. Now, a Picatinny is a bag. Let me just, girl, show you the bag, okay? Um, that um, Hermes makes, obviously. And I had seen this bag, y'all, um, I think in Dallas at the North Park store. And it actually was two-toned. It was one side was a really pretty navy blue and the other side was like Kelly green. And I absolutely fell in love with it. Left the bag stupidly because I didn't know as much about Hermes then only to find out that every bag that Hermes makes, they 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 gonna make you work for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it took me about a year to get my hands on one again, specifically that was the size I wanted with gold hardware. This is a size 24, I think Hermes calls it. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. It comes in two sizes. This is the larger size. I have inside of it um, an organizer, so it is kind of a little bit more boxy than it typically would be. The bottom of it has feet, and it is just, it's my baby. I've absolutely loved it all year long. It is such a great everyday bag. I recently saw somebody carrying this, and she had um, a large scarf where she had kind of tied it on both sides and made it crossbody, and I was like, ooh, that's a vibe. <laughs> So I'll be looking to do that, I'm sure, sometime in the new year. But this was my first purchase, my first purchase of 2021, and it was a good one. I highly recommend if you are an Hermes lover, if you're into the craftsmanship, just the heritage and the history of the brand, that you look at some other handbags outside of the Birkin, the Kelly, the Constance, maybe even the Evelyn. There are so many other options that are out there, y'all. And the Picatinny is my favorite. Unfortunately, it's not on the website. Um, you may have to, you know, do some a little strange for some change. <laughs> I'm just I did not do that. I did, I did, the Quincy, I love you. I, did, I didn't do nothing strange for the bag. Um, <laughs> you may have to build a relationship with an essay in order to get your hands on one, especially in a neutral color. But girl, it is possible. And this was one of my best handbag purchases of the year. I also grabbed these in January. Um, I grabbed these in January actually when I was in Miami with my family on a family vacation that we take every year. And they are the Dior D. Natalie boots. Now, one of the reasons why these were one of my uh, best purchases of the year, all of these like best purchases probably have a bit of a story behind them or many of them do. And the story behind these girl is that I was in either Saks or Neiman's and for some reason, I have no idea why, they had these shoes on sale for like 60% off, girl. And it was right before Dior discontinued them, okay? So I got probably one of the last pair of these shoes um, in store, brand new. I always, always eyed these shoes. I always loved them. Um, they came in different heights. They came in different colors. I just feel like it's a bomb boot or booty. 
It's a great way to dress up a casual outfit in the cooler months and they work well, really well into spring. So really they're a three season shoe, okay? I love the little pop of gold right here. And I have still seen these y'all and I will link them down below on sites like Bestier, The Real Real, Poshmark, etc. So you can still find them and you can still find them at a really, really good price, barely used or brand new. But girl, I was shocked when I found these things in a 41 and a half, which is my size I was like go ahead and catch me out um, to the register we go okay um and I just absolutely love having like this little piece of Dior history in my wardrobe so I absolutely love the Denali boots grab these in January of this year my next pair of shoes are these by Chelsea Paris girl these shoes have been dogged out <laughs> And I would say that I would replace these, but unfortunately these are discontinued. And also, I got these shoes on a heck of a deal on Shopbop Girl. It was over the summer, I was traveling, really needed like a cute just, you know, everyday black heel that wasn't going to hurt my feet. And uh, this shoe has taken me from brunch to Miami swim week, to everyday style, to date night, to the grocery store. Like, it's just, look at the heel. Look at the, it, the width of the heel on the bottom instantly makes them so much more comfortable. It reminds me of an Amina Mawadi, but it's not as exaggerated because this part of the heel is not as thin. Um, I, I'm just obsessed, girl. And I was going through my IG for this video and kind of, you know, screenshotting different pictures of me wearing the items that I love for the year. And I realized that of everything on this list, you probably have seen me wear these shoes the most. Chelsea Paris is a black owned brand. Love them. Will not be my last pair of shoes by them. Highly recommend tints across the board, girl. And, and I'm sorry for the way that I have done y'all this year because this is abysmal. <laughs> Next, let's talk about clothes, y'all. Actually, ooh, let me button these up, girl. Make them look a little presentable. Um, let's talk about clothes. Y'all already know, the Mango Casilda jeans, okay? These are wide leg. These are a size eight. They have the unfinished hem at the bottom. I, I'm surprised I'm not wearing them today. I'm so, I, I mean, and I just got these. Um, they were first in my fall haul. I got them for fall. Um, I shared with y'all that I'm trying to have a little bit more variety in my denim. I actually have a denim video coming up very soon. And I just felt like, you know what? It was time for a wide leg pair of jeans. Mango is it for denim for me. I'm almost six feet tall. I am curvy, but I do have a slim waist and I've never had any of like the gapping in the back and everything is always the appropriate lift length for me as well and so they're great quality a little bit of stretch in them but not a whole lot they're not like I don't feel like I have to break them in super easy to wear I love kind of the medium wash on them and yeah this was my best pair of denim probably of pants that I purchased all of 2021 and then you already know where I'm going next, girl. Can't talk about clothing without throwing in the Daily Sleeper set. This set comes in many colors, y'all, but it's the black for me. I have looked at the pink one, the green one, the white one, and I love all of those other colors, but I have not found a color that I am as drawn to as the black. I just think it looks so luxe. And this actually started my love affair with feathers. I'm sorry, there's a fire truck going by. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Um, this started my love affair with feathers because I started to realize how instantly they can make an outfit actually look pretty edgy if you pair them down. Um, instead of like going to cocktail attire, for example, I'll put these on, y'all have seen it, with a pair of denim, a pair of loafers and go to the mall, right? And so I love the fact that both pieces look really good, separate or together. Um, they are pricey for a pair of PJs, but I mean, it's just, the set is a stunt piece. It's, it's Girl, get it. If you have been thinking about it, get it. Now, one thing I can say is that the Daily Sleeper PJs tend to run small, and I've shared this with you all before. Um, I uh, am a 28, 29 waist, 
thick in the hips <laughs> so um when i originally got these in a size medium they were super tight um i was about five pounds heavier now that i've slimmed down a little bit they fit well but if you were someone who is in between sizes i would recommend that you go up next up is an item that's actually packed away because it is packed in my other closet um for with my summer pieces and it is my Fendi linen two-piece set that we got at the Fendi on Rodeo Drive. Um, I saw this, I think first on maybe like My Teresa. And I said I gotta have it. I have to have it. And I know for some people it probably is super casual and doesn't necessarily have to be by Fendi. But that's actually what I love about it. Some of my favorite ready, ready to wear by designers are items that can be worn casually, dressed up, but most importantly that can be woven into your wardrobe on a daily basis. And the fact that the pockets are lined with silk, I love just the draping and the fit of the shorts. I love in the back. There's like this very small kind of Fendi embroidered cutout. Same thing at the top of the shorts. So like if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. I, I, the shorts have given me everything that I needed. The top has as well. I am just so happy that my first two pieces of Fendi are ready to wear were these two pieces because now I feel like if I did want to go out and kind of jump out into more logo like the Zuka print, I actually have a pair of Zuka print pants on my wish list for uh, the upcoming year then I can um, because I started with something that can be a foundation of my spring and summer wardrobe and so um, it just gave me life girl I got I was just so excited every time I put it on um, again it might be considered simplistic but it actually was a runway piece um, and I was really excited because of where I purchased it at it was my first time on Rodeo um, the Fendi store there is of course absolutely amazing it's two or three four floors um, I had put it on hold before I got there I called and just told the SA that I would be coming and told her what my size was to make sure that it was in stock and everything just worked out so beautifully while I was there it was a complete and total experience and uh, Fendi just remains one of my favorite brands Kim Jones we love you we love the creative director uh, I am a Fendi stan and my collection will I'm sure continue to grow and so that definitely was a great piece of clothing for 2021 and the last item in this category that I'm absolutely obsessed with is this little micro bag. The top handle says, come on now, get in good. <laughs> this is your moment. Get it together. Um, it is this micro bag by Valentino. Now, y'all know I'm having a moment with Valentino. Okay, we're me and you will never part. My tea, da, ta. That's where we are right now. And um, I <laughs> I got this from Saks right before Miami Swim Week this summer. I went in looking for just <clears throat> cute accessories, something that was going to kind of stand out. I didn't really have a good idea of what I wanted. Gravitate towards this bag immediately. And yes, y'all already know me. It was on sale. Okay, unfortunately, I cannot find this exact one. Um, I can't say that because it might be available on a resale site. But I do know that brand new now Valentino has one that's a little bit larger, which probably is better because clearly this does not fit my phone. But it does have on the inside, y'all. A chain strap okay so it can be worn crossbody I just put my phone in my pocket I, I now have a newfound obsession with micro bags thanks to this just because I feel like it gives your outfit this really edgy pop like oh, I'm just such a cool fashion girl I don't know. why do I need the bag to hold my things I don't even need it like I'm just that cool <laughs> That's what I feel like it gives, you know what I mean? Impractical, I know. Um, and it's black, the gold uh, chain strap adds an extra piece of jewelry, I think. And so between these two bags, which I feel like I kind of went practical every day to more of an edgy, even evening bag, this was really kind of like every box that I needed to check in my wardrobe for the year. Um, and I only actually purchased one more bag and that's the Brandon Blackwood bag this year. So I feel like I did pretty good. 
That's a lie. I got one more thing, but I'm waiting to Christmas to unbox it. Nevertheless, uh, neither of those items are going to surpass my love for the Picatinny and also uh, the Valentino bandy bag. And so this is the last item in my clothing and accessories category. And I'm so happy that I got this this year. Sorry y'all, the last category was actually clothes and shoes because now we're about to get into the accessories. And first up is the Cartier Just Unclue. Um, now let me just say, because I've already, you know, tried to clear this up in a vlog, but now that I have you here, sis, come close, okay? I don't have a problem with Cartier. Me and Cartier, we gang gang, we not beefing, all right? I actually love the brand. I love like the Panthier or the Panther collection. I love a lot of things that Cartier does. I was speaking specifically in my luxury items that need to be replaced video about the love bangle. It's just my opinion y'all and if you have the love bangle girl if you like it I love it. You work spend your money how you choose. For me I wasn't gonna spend seven grand on a bangle. What I did was <laughs> got this bracelet from Bay for my birthday. And I think the uh, Just Sun Clue, which is French for Jess and Nail, especially the one with the diamonds, is just something that really suits my bracelet stack. Uh, I have not seen really any other jeweler make kind of a twisted nail style um, bracelet and so I think it's super unique. I love the way that it looks with my other items and one of my goals this year y'all and really moving forward is to get more into fine jewelry. I think it's something that typically depending on the price of gold and diamonds that may hold its value a little bit better than some of the clothing and shoes um, that I have been into in the past and I think it's legacy. You can pass it on um, to my godchildren or someone else in my family one day. And I just feel like accessories are the name of the game. You know, you can have on something so basic and you can go from basic to bust down with the right accessories. And the Cartier Just Unclue for me is a forever piece that is at the top of the list. I am so, so happy that I got this this year. Next up is something super tiny and it is the Dior brooch and every time I pull this out to talk about it y'all I'm like well let me put this let me put this thing on and then when I put it on I'll be like well wait a minute <clears throat> that's actually that's actually a look for what I am wearing today anyway girl um I got this after I'd seen it at Dior in Atlanta, um, and I, like many people, had like considered the Chanel brooch over the years, also the YSL brooch. I had considered, y'all know I'm a big Saint Laurent fan, and I had never thought about the Dior brooch. And when I saw it, I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I think a white button down, a black sweater, my black coat. This little thing, since I have had it, has been an absolute workhorse in my wardrobe. Um, and once again, it's the kind of accessory that can make a simple but sophisticated outfit pop. And it just makes you look like you tried. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, okay? I'm going to put on a brooch before I go through the carpool line to pick up Mackenzie. That's, you know what I mean? Like, I thought about it. I thought about it because I'm classy. And and that's what I feel like a good approach. It, get, it gives you a lot of class, okay? Um, and this Dior one is actually now on sale or it was on sale. It might have gone back to full price. Um, it is not a huge investment and I think it is a great place to also start a luxury collection. So that is another one of the best accessories that I purchased in 2021. And we got to talk about the Gucci belt. This is not a Gucci belt, girl. <laughs> We got to talk about the Valentino belts. I'm sorry. The disrespect. Fred, I know. I see the way you're looking at me right now. Okay. Um, I got this, y'all. Funny story. I had wanted it in January. But January, we had gone to Saks. Saks was having this great sale. I was trying on this belt when I found the Dior booties. And so I'm like, well, I'm not getting two luxury items today when I didn't come in here expecting to buy one. <laughs> Okay, um, and so I decided to get the shoes because the shoes were just an epic sale. So happy I did because I don't know if I would have been able to find them again in my size. And I left the belt there. Well, um, on my birthday, 
for for my birthday trip myself and Andre because we're both born two days apart April 4th for me April 6th for her when we were in LA in Palm Springs um, myself and Amber Rochelle if y'all know her hey Amber um, we were shopping on Rodeo once again <laughs> and that was kind of the theme of my trip um, and we went in Valentino I think she was trying on the wider one if I'm not mistaken and this belt came back as I knew it would girl just make a list make a list and it came back in this one with the hammered hardware which is not one that I had seen before I think the one that I was trying on in January was um the smooth gold I love the antique hardware so much more I have worn this belt too many times to count most recently I put it around my coat um it is reversible I have to say that I wish that this style with the antique gold would have come with brown on this side I'll be honest because there's not a whole lot that I feel like I can wear this with. I mean, not that I'm thinking of it though, this time of year, I could actually wear it with my white boots. So I don't know, I might try to put it in rotation a little bit more, but for me, y'all know I wear a lot of black. Um, and so the, the black side gets for sure the most wear. And then the black side is also almost like a, a textured, like a grained leather. And then the white side is a smooth leather. Girl. This belt really just like cemented my love for belts and honestly just my belief that a good belt is going to accentuate almost any outfit. If you feel like your outfit is just missing something, a belt is probably what you need. Yours, of course, does not have to be Valentino, but if you have been thinking about this one um, in the skinnier size, and this is also, I'm a size 6 and I think this is an 80 in the length. Um, I don't know what Valentino calls this with, but it's not the skinniest and it's clearly not the large one. But if you had been thinking about it, girl, this is your sign. If you're like me, you love gold jewelry, or maybe you're minimal in your jewelry and you want your belt to kind of be the pop or the statement of your outfit, this is a great one. I do think that the Gucci one is, you know, it's kind of seen its heyday. And so if you want to go in a different direction, this one is a great one. Last but not least is something that I actually um, have been talking to you all about, about wanting to give you more details on. So now is the moment and it is my Fossil watch, my Fossil smart watch. I will have the details on the exact name of this down below because I don't remember it. But what I can say is that I had a... Um, an Apple Watch when they first came out. And there's just something about, I think, the square um, construction of that watch, kind of how it's curved on the sides. Even with a different band, that watch to me still reads sporty. And I was looking at a smartwatch over the summer. I was starting to kind of work out more. And I just wanted to have something that could help me to just keep track of my sleep, of my heart rate, things like that. And I was like, I know I don't want to do an eye watch again. What should I do? I found the Fossil watch. I was looking up reviews and this one came highly rated. And girl, I see why. First of all, the band I'm obsessed with. Now this can be replaced pretty easily. But I'm a gold lover, so I love the gold band. Okay. Um, now it is turned off, but you can um, adjust the settings to where the um, the face stays on. Okay. And then it has several different faces that I love. One of them is it has um, the time, of course, the date, how many steps you've had for the day, and also on the bottom, any upcoming events. And this has been a lifesaver, y'all, because if you're anything like me and you work from home, what had begun to happen is like hour by hour, minute by minute, stuff was just running together, girl. And I was literally forgetting my meetings. And I'm not someone who typically does that. Having this on my wrist and just being able to look down has been a lifesaver. Um, and then all you have to do is just slide, girl, and you can um, do the workout setting, which will track your heart rate for a particular workout, okay? They have this thing that they use, like a Google interface for, that actually has, um, that gives you a heart number, and you're supposed to, based upon your age, your weight, et cetera, your gender, um, your sub not your gender, I'm sorry, your sex, you're supposed to, um, you know, have a certain heart number for the week that you can work towards, just making sure that you're being as physically active as possible. It will track your sleep and it also will tell you the weather. 
I'm obsessed with it. Um, this is one little small piece of technology that I am so happy that I got this year. Next up is home and I'm going to talk to you first about um, our couch from Macy's. Girl, so we ordered this in like January, February probably um, because of all of the delays with furniture due to the panorama. Of course, we didn't get it until months later, but when we finally got it, we were so excited because we had been wanting a couch that we could both kind of lounge on and be comfortable and that's exactly what we got we watched so many movies when my grandparents were here on the couch everybody kind of snuggled up under a blanket pooks in the middle and we didn't feel crammed we felt comfortable I just feel like such a grown-up that I finally had this kind of couch and I understand why people kind of go up for things like the restoration hardware cloud sofa for example this was a fraction of the price of that um but I understand why they do because you know it's just it's comfortable and this has been one of the joys <laughs> of my life as far as furniture is concerned I did not know it was possible okay people often say that they don't they did not know until I talked about this couch that Macy's has furniture yes girl they do in fact some Macy's um depending on what mall you're at they actually have a separate furniture store okay so I think we may have seen this online first but either way we got it at the Macy's in DC at Metro Center or kind of like downtown DC um took a few months for it to arrive and like I said I have been in love with it ever since and the price was phenomenal this couch I think was only like $1,500 and for something this size and this well made at most of the other kind of well-known furniture stores like an our age or an our house or even West Elm would have been at least three times the price and so we left out with this one and it makes me feel like I said like an adult and I think the navy blue really is a nice anchor in our living room because we do have so much color we would never go with a black couch but we have had like a lighter tan before and there's something about the navy because it is a jewel tone that I think is kind of just it anchors the living room Next up for home girl is a bathroom refresh that I did and I haven't had a chance to talk to you all a lot about that here. Um, so one of the best things I did was I just got this hankering one day to completely transform our guest bathroom. There was nothing wrong with it but things just felt a little dated not quite our aesthetic and I decided to do just something within a budget of less than a thousand dollars that could be done pretty easily and that was to change our out the light fixture the mirror the uh, towel rack and the knobs on the doors girl between Amazon and Home Depot we did that uh, called up a handy person to come in and it has completely elevated the bathroom if you are somebody who is again on a budget you know not the handiest person in the world don't want to do a complete gut this kind of small refresh could either a buy you some time until you do do the larger renovation or it might be like in the case of us all that we really needed uh, we even changed out the faucet and I mean just changing that stuff to brush gold again completely elevate the bathroom I never even walked into that bathroom <laughs> and now I am obsessed I like go in turn the light on just be like oh we still looking good we're looking cute and then I come out like <laughs> Got a new shower curtain, some new hand towels, um, and just I love that kind of like cage, almost like dome on the lighting. I love the black in the middle. It, it's just so good, girl. Um, and the color, we had actually got it painted when we first moved in. We got the whole house painted like in one fell swoop before the furniture arrived, which was actually a really good idea. Um, so the color was like a, a light slate gray slash blue that is a nice neutral gives it a very fresh feel and with the new fixtures um that like I said we just paid a handy man like 150 dollars to come in to do the bathroom refresh was one of my favorite home purchases of the year and the third piece or the third item are my white toenail season products. Um, I will show you the candle, but the candle is now sold out and I have burned my last one. Um, but the rediffuser is still available and this has been 
just such a delight to have throughout the house. I think the scent notes that we developed together, myself and Quinn Parfumes, who I created the White Tone Nail Season Rediffuser and Candle in partnership with, of sandalwood, rose, and a hint of vanilla. A little bit of spice has been absolutely delightful. I love kind of the beaker style of it. It just looks so chic and sophisticated in the house. I have two now, one in my office and one beside my bed in my bedroom. Um, and I'm just so proud of this product. And so, although this was not a purchase because I made it. <laughs> It's still one of my faves of 2021, and I'll make sure that it's linked down below. Next up is beauty. Uh, this is our last category, and sorry if you can hear uh, Omri on the phone. Sometimes our voices can carry between the rooms. But I am loving, y'all, the Bite Beauty Micellar Change Maker Foundation, or Change Maker Micellar Foundation. Either way, girl, this stuff is beauty in a bottle okay i have not found a light but buildable foundation that works well with my oily skin in quite some time and the beauty of this is not only is it a clean product but also the fact um that i love putting it on with my fingers like it almost feels like a sophisticated bb cream if that makes sense plus it comes in a million and one shades which y'all know if you are like me and you are of a darker, more chocolate hue, it can be really hard to find your color match, especially in a green beauty brand. And I think Bite Beauty just did the daggone thing with this. It went on sale and then I got it for an extra 20% off during the Sephora sale, the insider sale. So I'm really hoping that it is not being dis discontinued. I bought two at that time just to be on the safe side. But if I'm not wearing my new foundation that I just got, that is the Bobby brown foundation which I am wearing today because it is a little bit heavier and I think it translates better across the the screen when I'm on camera like this doing a seated video if I'm not wearing that then I am most definitely wearing the bite beauty foundation another fave that is brand new but I think it has to be mentioned because these two right here are a bad B collabo is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Skin Optimizing Primer, y'all. Um, with me having oily skin, I just feel like primers are so important, especially ones that not only are going to like, you know, blur fine lines or pores before you apply your makeup, but also ones that are going to mattify your skin. And this does that because it actually comes in two different formulas. One is just for dry skin, and this one is for normal to oily skin. And so I find that those two work really, really well together. So. That is my first beauty recommendation of 2021, definitely best purchase. Next up, let's talk about the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette. Girl, I got this from Sephora off the Humble. One thing about Sephora, they will always get me for eyeshadow. Eyeshadow is not something that I think a lot about purchasing. But when I'm putting on my makeup, it is one of, I think, like the most important almost anchors to my face. More so than lipstick. I love a good eye look. And so whenever I go in Sephora, girl, it's just like, gotcha. <laughs> they get me with the eyeshadow palettes. And I'm so happy that Natasha Denona, this palette specifically, called my name because this is it, y'all. Speaking, um about finding shades that match. That is also true for eyeshadows um, because I find that, and, and my dark girls know this, that a lot of times eyeshadow palettes do not always show up well on chocolate skin. And girl, this is just it. I'm gonna put up close up because I know this is probably uh, not quite in focus um but i love a good gold a good shimmer today i'm actually wearing one of the flat colors that's called glory with a little bit of clove in my crease on the side um but for me these are definite everyday colors even the color jasper y'all i find to be a good everyday base if you want to go for the no makeup makeup look the colors that i probably use the least are the lighter flat colors because for example a color like morning would make my um skin just look ashy honestly and so what i tend to do is put that on as a base when i want one of the other flat colors like glory to pop but either way i think all the shimmers look so great either all over my lid or kind of like in the crease of my eye um this has been definitely a great palette for the year and i want to say it was only like 40 bucks um 
and I think it was well worth the coins for I think this is 15 eyeshadows um, and the color payoff once again is absolutely amazing girl and last but not least is the necessary body wash in the fragrance sandalwood girl if you get nothing else <laughs> from this video. If you've been inspired to purchase nothing else, if you are not searching for any other item, this right here, you gotta put it on your list, girl, because this thing right here smells like the angels that have descended from up high. I am so impressed. So my cousin told me about this and I'm so happy she did, because not only does it smell great, not only is it moisturized, not only does it have a great lather to it, but it got me off of that Joe Malone fifty dollar body wash, girl, because I was out here like, like an addict, girl. If I gotta get my body wash, I was out here like an addict off that expensive Joe Malone body wash. And don't get me wrong, I still would treat myself with that one every once in a while. But this is half the price and works just as well, if not better. And I racked up, I think I got three or four <laughs> during the Sephora sale because I just had to have it in the closet. Um, it is, again, uh, sandalwood. You know how I feel about sandalwood. It's, it's actually the primary fragrance or one of the fragrances and the White Tone Nail Season Reed Diffuser. I, I just, Necessaire is it and they also make a body scrub as well. Um, they make it in a eucalyptus fragrance and they have one that is fragrance free. I would even use that one. That is just how much I believe in this product and again the lather and the moisturization that it leaves you with. You don't get out of the shower looking like you just rolled in baby powder, okay? I'm sensitive about having my skin feel very dry and very tight. I mean, I want to be clean, but I don't want to feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I move, I might, like, crack a body part. This right here is going to hit all of the nails on the head for 20 25 bucks, girl. You can't go wrong with the necessary body wash. Honorable mention, honorable mention, y'all, is not an item. But it is a treatment and it is, I went through a series of hydrofacials and also laser genesis treatments this year by my girl Michelle German who's a medical PA and um, both of those, actually she has an esthetician who does the hydrofacial, she does the laser genesis treatment. Um, but both of those combined together, girl, had my skin looking embryonic. Like, I'm talking about not even youth-driven. Like, I was in the utero. My skin looked so young. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the interesting part about it is that, like, I went for maybe, like, my first two treatments saw a glow which I loved but it took a minute for me to start to really see the results the texture of my skin was absolutely amazing it started to fade my dark spots because any little pimple scar scratch I get on my skin it is going to turn dark that is just the beauty and the curse of having a lot of melanin in my skin okay and so laser genesis is something that now girl I absolutely swear by um it is something that I definitely want to jump back into next year I think it's anti-aging again it, it it the the texture of your skin it removes fine lines like it is it's the fountain of youth girl I think I I found the secret to never aging <laughs> and don't get me wrong I have no problem with aging but if we can you know just have a little bit of self-care okay get rid of some dark spots along the way why not and the hydrofacial also y'all it's bomb it's like this vacuum <laughs> that's used to suck all of just that icky stuff out of your skin you know what I mean like it's only so much that we can do washing our faces and so between 
oil, pollution, debris, uh, you know, trapped makeup and skincare products is something that like doing once a month really also helps to fight breakouts, etc. And so those two treatments this year, I think made a big difference. And I could actually see after I stopped going a difference negatively in my skin, which is why I definitely want to give them a try again in 2022. And that is it y'all. Those are my best purchases of 2021. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Let me know down below. What was your best purchase of the year girl i'm thinking about getting an espresso should i is was that a purchase that you made this year maybe it was a new car let us know we are a child and we want to know down in the comment section in the meantime i love y'all be well happy new year good people if i don't see you before the first and i will see y'all across the internet peace